Boom. Vanguard influence. Done. Now here at Club Mango, we're getting ready for the holiday season. And I hope you're enjoying your card fight con. Make sure you're hitting up the chat. You're hitting up the comments. If there's a like button, hit the like button. Tell your mama, tell your grandma, everybody to come in and start watching this awesome content. But now we're moving on to Vanguard Zero to Hero and talk about the latest game. It's been a year now. It's an amazing game. Just about a year. But let's get into some Vanguard Zero conversation. Go. This is the Vanguard Zero panel. I'm your host, Echo, aka Echo underscore CBG. And with me are JJ, aka GG Mr. Rogers, Asterisk, as well as Kylie, aka Ride My Avatar. Uh, would you guys, just before we get started, like to possibly introduce yourselves, uh, just so people know kind of uh, a bit more about you and where they can find you uh, after the con? Obviously, I probably think we'll probably start with Kyle onto Asterix onto JJ, just so we go in order. What's up, Digital Card Fighters? This is Kyle D, better known as Ride My Avatar, bring, bringing you from Card Fight Con. You can find me on YouTube and Twitch, same Twitter, um, same handles as always, so as Ride My Avatar with an exclamation point. So. <laughs> That's where you can buy me. Nice, nice. Uh, see, I'm not professional. I don't script my intros out. So I'm Asterisk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can find me on YouTube at Asterisk Official. I am well known for my irregular upload schedule and my love for angel fervors. And you can also find me on Twitter where I just tweet random garbage at <laughs> Asterisk on. <laughs> what about yourself, JJ? Where can people find you? Okay. Hey, neighbors. How's it going? How's it hanging? What's up? Um, name is JJ. You can find me at GG Miss Rogers on Twitter, or you can also find me on YouTube of the same name as well. That's it. Right. Cool, cool, cool. So, guys, obviously, all of us uh, kind of primarily, when we play, we tend to play Vanguard Zero primarily recently uh, as a game that has released in, at least on global, around April uh, 2020, uh, around the time, you know, everybody started magically having a lot more free time. Uh, so I was just wondering, how did you guys, obviously, because not everybody has connections over on the Japanese side, because I know they've had it for about three months extra. I think they got the release around uh, either December or January. Um, what did actually... December. Okay, December. Okay. Um, and kind of what got you guys kind of to find out about the game or necessarily get started on it? Or when, at which point did you decide to either get started or start making content on it? Uh, I'll go first. Sure. Sure. Um... I found out about it ages ago in 2018 where Bushiro were doing their like product reveal stream where they revealed like the Vanguard V series hmm. reboot and then at the end they were like we've got one extra thing for you and that was when they revealed Vanguard Zero and basically from that moment onwards I was like yeah sure I'll play that and then eventually it released and I was like yeah sure I'll record myself playing that and upload it and see if people watch it and very very simple i guess not much more to it than that i was just like i like vanguard i make videos i record myself playing it and then boom here we are hmm. oh, there you go. like what about, what about uh, you guys so with me i heard about it back like in the year like a year before it was released in japan i demoed it at one of the um springfield the um new, new york events the team league i got the demo and i liked it i didn't really get to see much more than the demo but it was interesting and then i kind of forgot about it for a while <laughs> and then all of a sudden i heard about it coming to global and then i was like okay let me make content i had a channel up prior that was just deck fights and stuff like that and i had like an asterisk loading Whenever I felt like uploading something, I uploaded. <laughs> yep. Dude, it's, it's hard, man. It's always hard to kind of get into a, a regular schedule on it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. How about you, Jay? Just kind of the person who I think out of all, all three of us has the most hours clocked on the game uh, due to your kind of daily streams. Um, I think I've been playing it since it was in GP Open Beta, I think. Um, so like three months before the official release or so, um, 
so I I think probably yeah I've been playing it a bit longer than a lot of people uh, it's been pretty fun for me I think I found about it just like everybody else during like spring fest um, having the demos and stuff or when I used to um, give demos myself at some of the events since I, I used to have to judge some of the events myself we would handle the product and we would let the, the players play with it so I've kind of known about it for a while <laughs> a while so that's kind of how I uh, came across it and kind of just liked the game you know it's pretty fun actually out of curiosity then just because uh, obviously I know you were mentioning you used to be a judge for, for Vanguard events and you had to handle product uh, like how did that mm -hmm. actually work for you guys like do you do you just get like dib first dibs on, on product tests or how, how does that tend to work or do you have to like supervise it uh how to explain this okay so usually do you would have like a either depends on what where the events are going to be held you would get asked to hey do you want to host these events and you would get product allotted to you depending on which days you do judging for them and mm -hmm. they would give you like hey these are the play mats you got to give out to the players and this is the preview of the product and usually that's handled by the head judge himself mm. and sometimes he would need to be in a vicinity to allow the players because it's usually on his personal phone or a phone that was given to him by bushy to let the players play on okay so it's so it's not like you're not just giving the api to random people it's you know it's more of a no. you know specifically you're here to use this phone don't do anything yeah <laughs> yeah well usually you have it like uh bolted on mm. the table so it was fine mm. <laughs> actually i i think one of the most interesting thing is because I think especially since Vanguard was introduced I think uh, like you guys were saying when Viera was getting announced and, and kind of when Vanguard was shifting towards uh, the reboot it basically made a distinction again with Stand and Premium being two different formats uh, how did you guys do you guys think what do you think Zero's place in the community actually is because it is very much so an old, a product for old Vanguard fans to almost try and bring them in but it is still very very different it's an entirely separate entity uh, to you know the actual physical card game like like Grandma Avatar was mentioning earlier it's almost like dual links to Yu-Gi-Oh where they're both Yu-Gi-Oh but they're not this very separate products like what do you think Zero's actual place in the Vanguard community is and like how it should be treated it's a gateway drug <laughs> it's intentionally designed <laughs> to be identical to the trading card game so that you play it for a bit and you're like oh this is simple enough for me to understand because I think there's like a stigma amongst mm. people who aren't into card games that like oh my god, there's so many rules and I can't like memorize all of them. And what is this? What is that? And so by creating a very simplified and easy to get into version of the game for a phone, you can kind of learn it really easy and there's like the nice flashy graphics and stuff mm. and you got the memorable anime characters and stuff. Mm. Then you see people online, not naming names, who are like, <laughs> you know, this doesn't have guarding in it. I think this would be cooler if it had guarding in it. And then you're like, you know, I kind of want to play a version of the game that has guarding it. So, you know, I might pre-order the new booster box that's releasing, you know? And I think that's the place it kind of occupies where it's supposed to be something fun to kind of play and get new people into it or back into it that they may be lost. Mm. But also at the same time, I don't necessarily think it's supposed to be any kind of substitute for the main game. Mm. But actually, to to kind of get no. back on that, so do you, do you think it's possibly like if it's if you think it's not meant to be a substitute for the game? Obviously, again, anything with Sank, we all we all obviously love the game and we enjoy the game. But like when you say it's it's not meant to be a substitute, do you think there's possibly a question then as to why it was done as, with the original series as opposed to implementing the new retreads of the cards? Um, that's just because gift yeah, markers are just broken. <laughs> <laughs> the nostalgia factor, I would think. Hmm. It's, a, yeah. it's a easier. The game as its base level, even with the markers, is I think too, um, too confusing for some players. Sometimes hmm. having to know what the difference between an actual marker is or a pseudo marker, uh, gift markers. Um, you know treasure tokens and mm -hmm. having all those implemented i think would cost a bit too much in terms of coding and design maybe maybe not for bushi or whatever but mm -hmm. we don't know how their finances are with uh, with those type of situations and having a simplified game like base og vanguard is easier mm -hmm. and of course a lot of the older players oftentimes are either office workers or you know assistants or um work in the call centers or whatever and they have like you know, four to five minutes of the day, and they just have something to play. So, mm. Vanguard Zero is it's a good way of getting those yeah. type of people in and keeping them. 
and, and I also think it gives them more of a buffer for content. See, if you start mm. from the very beginning, it's obvious as to what you're going to add in next. It's like, well, we're going to add mm. in the next set. If they started with a more recent set or whatever, then they run out of new sets to add, and they obviously don't want to catch up with where the card game currently is anytime mm. soon. So it kind of just gives them more time and more content to release over the years. Because mm. <clears throat> definitely. Because I was gonna say, Kyle, what, what about yourself? Because like, I know you were making content about the TCG like for quite a bit before Zero came out. Again, like you said, when when you were more feeling like it, but kind of you were still making content for it. So what like actually made you want to make the change to? You know, like for example, when you're streaming, focus more on zero as opposed to you know just doing remote fights. Um, that came really down to basically COVID, and really mm-hmm. helping to limit it and Nate, like me being able to go to my locals, get the recordings I need. My card shop shut down. I was like, well, I can't make content. So, and then zero just hit that fine niche spot where it was hitting this momentum where you could make content and get a lot of traction because it was a very popular game and it just took off from there Hmm. Hmm. because like i think it's been quite interesting to see like it it, because a lot of people when you've been streaming when we people who've been streaming zero you'd get people kind of coming in going you know not even being aware that there is a sort of physical card game to go along with it uh do you think there's possibly like because i I know a lot of the um things people have been asking about zero is you know where, where are we going next uh you know from new coming players or players who perhaps have left during that era of the game because as as most games do people come in and out which is which is absolutely fine uh like you guys know myself i i quit during like where we are now in JP, jp where link joker came out uh at the time i had left the game and i had only recently come back with zero uh so but thankfully we we, we caught up to g over on jj's stream so i managed to uh <laughs> Catch catch up on ten years of content. Uh, thankfully, I may or may not have become a gear simp in the process, but it is what it is. So, like <laughs> for for people like that, with with all these, because because you guys are saying that like one of the strengths Zero has is its simplicity at the moment, and kind of its accessibility to new players. Uh, do you guys think there's ever possibly a concern that as the game goes on and we get introduced to the new mechanics, as you do, that they're all either going to be reworked in a sense or applied anyway so for example i think the the biggest example now isn't isn't even legion or stride it's when when g guarding comes out well g gun will presumably have to impl- impl- implement some sort of you know almost like a move by move um activation condition so like in the sense like in the way Yu-Gi-Oh has uh, after almost every move would you like to activate the strap card you know when you play the games would you like to activate this trap card? would you like to activate the spell card like repeatedly so do you think that's going to end up happening to zero and when and if it does uh, do, are you, do you think there might be some questions from the community as to why why was the game simplified in games like the lack of guarding if you're going to add a mechanic that's, that functions the same way in the future? I think... I mean, this is a difficult question, uh, but I do appreciate that. I get the brain kind of rolling. Hmm. I think that the smartest decision is to really think hard about the small tweaks to each new mechanic Mm. that will make them seem more accessible without really changing how they fundamentally work so how they would change g-guarding i'm not quite certain but you are right like the thing that Yu-Gi-Oh games do where it just keeps asking you like every two seconds whether or not you want to activate an effect is kind of ridiculous (laughs) um I'm I'm not quite sure how they changed that exactly, but they've definitely shown like uh, some of the already existing mechanics have already been like very simplified or changed, and mm. I think they're gonna keep doing that in ways that I'm honestly not even gonna be able to predict. They've probably mm. got like fairly big like research teams playing the game constantly figuring this <laughs> stuff out. So I'm not gonna solve the code in two seconds. Just just imagine you pan you pan over to their offices. And it's just like we're sure Bushy has this sorted out, and it's just like the scene from SpongeBob with like the office on fire and everybody running around trying yeah. to put it out. <laughs> it's like we're figuring it out, guys. We're working on it. <laughs> it just at the end of the day, it's because G Guardians is such a future endeavor, and we won't see that probably for RN maybe in another two to three years if they bring it in. Mm. Because again, G Guardians was halfway through G era, mm. like when they finally introduced it. So. Again, you're looking at something that's like three years down the road that 
would make sense to introduce later. Hmm. Again, regarding it, it mechanics, possibly be sooner though. Yeah, no, because think, the the pace of how they're releasing the product. I think because it comes out set by set, I think we're due to get because we're thinking about halfway through Link Joker now. I think we're mm-hmm. probably going to get about a year, year so year and a tiny bit maybe because it was what GBT six, right? I think it was GBT six, I believe. Yes. So that yeah, so I think that's two sets for Legion, five, four or five left for Link Joker, and then like six left for G Era. Well, you also have to realize that they did have a lot of promo for Legion. Mm-hmm. Like they can mm-hmm. definitely slide stuff in. Like they're slowly sliding in. Grand Blue got a G Era PG. I mean, mm-hmm. yes, I get it, it's a PG, mm-hmm. but the Ghosty is a G Era card mm-hmm. PG that got pulled in advance. So. As I've been saying theoretically, I think what they could do if they're not going to rush into G Era hmm. and into Legion, they could keep Limit Break alive longer because we did have in G Era support hmm. for all of these Limit Break decks hmm. that you can just slowly pull in and go like, now you can make these premium collection packs where it's only like two to three cards, but it's all the hmm. clans hmm. where, I mean, it's not theoretically beneficial to do that but i'm just saying that could be their way of hmm. elongating this out another year, like couple months before hmm. they even go into legion so you, you mean like for example because uh, I, I know when i was on when i was just getting back i was hearing kind of all the support that was coming out like all like the legion and limit break support that came out in early g to almost pull it back to before g even gets introduced to give those decks uh perhaps a bit more of a fighting chance or a chance in the spotlight before yeah. g era Yep. Okay. Because be there's there's like what <laughs> there's like thirteen or fourteen cards or so that we still probably don't even have that we should yeah. have probably had at a time. So um, <laughs> I'm expecting us to get them within the next what five sets or six sets that we're supposed mm. still supposed to get. Mm. So, uh, I'm uh, I'm optimistic with the mm. with Kyle plan. Mm. <laughs> I think that'll be I think that'll be very very interesting in in terms of helping people catch up while still letting people. Te- was not not even t- test mechanics. Back. Yeah, yeah, More exactly. Because because hmm. like where where Jira is like very very much so its own kind of its own beast. Letting people enjoy, you know what? I I like this Legion archetype because and I think the TCG Legion was two sets, wasn't it? Two or three sets, I think. So it gives people like a little more time to enjoy the mechanic. Because like even as a co- conceptually, like I've never played Legion, but I love the mechanic as like a concept. Like I like the thematics behind the mechanic. So like it'll be some, it'll be quite fun I think to like enjoy the, that yeah, for a bit more. The introduction of you get to grit you it was a more of going second format because again mm. you wanted to stride it was like the introduction of how to play stride because mm. again both had to be on grade three and mm. people would stall out to get to the first grade three ride in Legion era mm. because they got more benefit for legioning than they did for not mm. legioning. The interesting thing was if they were going to change the number of triggers, you end up needing the drop zone solely because you have things like in in zero. Whenever you check a trigger for a drive check, it goes straight in the drop zone. So you're probably going to have to have like high numbers and, and things like that. But kind of in in terms of like coming into zero, because I know obviously you guys were all saying you know we found it through either Spring Fest or or the product reveal streams. Like, how would you right? Because obviously we're, when 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 we're live, you know people come in uh, that are new to the game and they and they find a community to enjoy and to stick around with and a community to bond with to keep playing the game and perhaps get new people in. But how do you think either either we as uh, I'm going to call uh, uh, content creators for the for the game. Like how, what do you think is our role in in terms of either sustaining the player base or bringing in new players and how would you go about bringing a new player in do you think? Like 20 or Vanguard as a whole. I getting think... into getting ahead, sorry. <laughs> um <laughs> getting Going into Zero, it's advertising the game and everything like that, which they're doing on marketing-wise, but we got to make the content to keep them interested in, like, clans and stuff like that. And, again, not a lot of content creators, even myself, I kind of don't... I overgloss budget decks because, again, that's what sells a lot of people into it is decks they can play that holds their own into a meta that is can sometimes just wear you down when you're like mm. right now it's gold paladins and narakami mm. you like i've actually stepped back from a deck that i haven't played since its conception mm. and that was shadow paladins i started climbing the ladder with that and then what 
<laughs> it's actually holding its own in everything, even just crit basing on Narukami is just so mm. hilarious. Mm. No, for sure, hundred percent. Like I, I think like I know any any player who comes in because obviously I think there was a I can't remember which study it was, uh, but I was looking into how much people spend on on mobile games or on video games in general uh, beyond initial purchase price, and I think it was something like. I think every single game has ninety percent of its or ninety nine percent of its. I think it's between ninety and ninety nine percent of its player base is going to be entire. It's going to be entirely free to play, uh, but then obviously the one the you know the I, I can't remember if it was one or ten percent. It was basically I think it's one percent. It's effectively responsible for all the spending in the game. Uh, so it, it's kind of one of the things where like obviously for most people, while Vanguard is very very free to play accessible with the crafting mechanics, especially with the recent changes with guaranteed drops. Um, like I think I think I, remember, I think it was Luard, um, Drag out Luard, who's one of the kind of top ranking players in, in ladder. Um, I believe he did, he ran the numbers on it, and I think it could average out. I think it was about seventy five chopper material for each for the clan if you grind it all week. So in a sense, realistically, in every, in a month you can craft five chopper for for a clan, like per clan. Obviously, you can run you can run multiple. You're, this is you're guaranteed forty. Mm. You can get guaranteed forty. Yeah, no, I think I think he went off like average drop rate. Like when he ran tests, it was like it averaged out about that many a month if he did both, uh, very hard, oh, hard and very hard every single day. I think. Yeah, that's just luck based, but yeah, yeah. yeah every week you can get hundred and sixty mm. guaranteed mm. if you timed it right, and I've done that by my research. Mm. It's all about timing it. Like right before the reset, if you save your stamina, mm. and when your stamina's max, you just use it all on the two that you're waiting for you mm. can get 40 in a week because mm. I, I think that would that would still put people kind of in you know in a decent talk where they get into the game but until they choose a clan with the with the frequent release schedule uh budget decks do tend to very much so be kind of people's not not even necessarily entry point but like the way to get hooked on the game they need to find this like little budget deck that just is fun for them is interesting isn't like necessarily like a helmet deck which obviously card games need to yeah. have. Like they need to have every. I, I, can, yeah. I definitely, I'm definitely the mindset that the most fun part about getting into a new card game, and this is gonna sound like super. It's funny because we make deck profiles and stuff, mm. but I'm gonna go ahead and say that to me the most fun part is just opening a bunch of packs and then just throwing the cards together and mm. seeing what works and learning the game that way. Mm. Uh, and like the deck profiles and stuff are cool, but like. There's mm. something magical about that feeling of being like, wait a minute, what about this card? And then <laughs> like somehow owning people with it. Mm. And I think that's a really fun experience. And I think that the new players seeing us like discuss the game in detail and go, what about this card? What about this card? Maybe mm. us mentioning a card like that could get the player to be like, oh, I didn't try that card before. I'm going to try it and then lose, but still have fun doing it anyway. Mm. I, I think so too, personally. But like, I was gonna say as well because uh, just to like, carry on because we were talking about um, this is, like a, a flash because we were recording the uh, future meta predictions panel, which is obviously another panel that's going to be on CardFightCon. Obviously, to anybody watching this, uh, don't forget to check that one out as well. Uh, we had some awesome people on it, uh, but it, we came up with the topic as well of, of budget decks uh, and of I, I, to, by extension limited fight. Uh, we were kind of talking about how like a lot of people seem to when they play when they play a physical card game. You open your pack of seven cards, you yeet the first five cards into oblivion, and you just check if your last card is a double rare or a triple rare, or a VR. If it isn't, you yeet the pack away and you grab another one. Like, people never seem to pay attention to, they never seem to, like, read the common cards and realize that, especially in recent time, recent months, uh, in recent sets, we sure it has actually done a spectacular job in providing people with a budget deck that is, that isn't, like, the normal deck but worse. It is such a vastly different yeah. playstyle. That you, you almost like I I I was playing obviously against um one of one of JJ's teammates uh, Dave from Team Crushing the Meta, uh, I've been playing a lot of Gear Chronicle Mirrors against him recently just because you know because I've been enjoying the I've been enjoying playing the premium side of the game a lot more, and like there's um there's cards from I think it was Astro Force so Extra Booster thirteen, uh which is a I, I think it's something Colossus I can't remember it's a Grade three Gear Chronicle unit. That's just oh, bind, that dude. Oh my god! It's just bind a card from your drop zone, and you have to guard with two or more. He played that against me in time leap. Oh my god! How do I beat that? How do I play against that? <laughs> like, and it's all these little cards that is a common. Like, the only reason I know that that card exists, and I've opened plenty of Astro Force boxes, is because one time in my local shop, I walked up to a table that was just that card laying there. I picked it up. I was like, 
is, is this anybody's? And they were like, nah, I think someone just like left it there. And I just flipped it around. I was like, holy crap, this looks insane. What the hell? Like, in my life, despite <laughs> me having owning about 30 copies of it, I had never actually read it. Which from then on made me like, when I open packs, I go through, I read the skill on every single card I open in hope that maybe a viewer goes up and goes, you know what? I, I want to play Kagro. Uh, I can't afford the cross because Dote is going to cost me my firstborn child. But this, you know, this common card is actually pretty cool. I might want to try it out. So it's, it's like it's like the way that budget decks kind of, at, at least in Vanguard, I don't know how this functions on Yu-Gi-Oh! Or, or Magic. Obviously, I've, I've never, I've not played Yu-Gi-Oh! in a long time. I've never really played Magic. But like, at least in Vanguard, Bushiroad seems to do a spectacular job in, in providing the sort of alternative place on budget decks. And it's kind of lovely to see that thing carry over to, to Zero. Because in Zero, if you go for, you know, full SP triple res, you can't play Blau. Because Blau isn't isn't you know Blau, Blau isn't a blink deck, it runs like one triple rare, oh obviously one playset of a triple rare, but one triple rare. So so mm -hmm. how do you think? Because I know I know JJ has kind of uh, yet to uh, kind of mention what you take as well. Is like what do you think the role of budget decks is? Because I know before you started spending uh, in zero on every set, you were looking at a lot of budget decks, and you do kind of save ahead for clans that are you know are coming up. I know you you like, you like farming material ahead of time. Oh, because um, unfortunately, I <laughs> I play a lot of card games <laughs> as a living, so um, <laughs> for for commentary and whatever, I I had to learn a lot about different card games and different pivot points and metas and stuff like that. So I had to learn a lot cards. A lot of cards. Did you know there's over eight thousand seven hundred and seventy cards existing in Vanguard at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> Easy Why? game, boys. Easy game. Easy game. <laughs> With reprinted versions of themselves. <laughs> and there's more coming on the pipeline too. Jesus. But um, uh. but I I usually do it just more or less save my time, save my money. And mm. since I know almost every like, say for example, if a viewer usually tells me, yeah, what about this card and this set from this set like two sets ago or something, and I don't remember it, then it probably wasn't meta relevant for me, right? Mm. So it's not like. If it's probably be a budget card for somebody else, and I probably don't know the name, uh, this will sound super conceited. Ah, Go but it's for probably it. just a bad card. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's a worse uh, version of the better card that is in a double rare slot. <laughs> yeah, basically. And like I do agree with Echo when he said that you know a lot of the common cards have been pretty insane recently. So. I am very happy that Bushy Road has taken a lot of the design space and have added a lot more passion into some of the commons and stuff. So you can actually have some decks that can be double rare <clears throat> or even maximum triple rare, just like back in the day, and do a lot of damage. Blau, for example, Blau is mostly just triple rares and double rares, and mm. a whole lot of the rares are hella good. But, sir, uh, how true ancient dragons are just literally. I get crit and umga booga you. <laughs> but sir, how am I supposed to play this in my max foiling deck if it's only a common? It doesn't even have foiling. How am I supposed to play this? <laughs> but streamer. The answer is, when you get smacked by the person with a common deck, it proves Feels that your good, max man. very deck mean nothing. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I still remember, like, to that, like, I, I think still my most memorable, one of my most memorable experiences playing Zero uh, is I remember I managed to beat a perfect Riser deck in its prime with a Cray Elemental deck. I just like nine crit the man to heaven because he thought he was like, oh, this man's VP farming. Just put like all these PGs down. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm playing, dude. <laughs> just like double crit the guy just on three damage. He doesn't heal, and I'm starting to be like, feels good, man. Easy, easy game. Let's go. <laughs> I That's exactly one of the things you just said just now too to yourself. It's like ah, you double crit him. Mm. <laughs> Spice. But it's, it's I what? remember Sorry. facing off with my Kram elemental deck as you mentioned. I was placing shadows. They six damage heal. I didn't crit them. I didn't crit them the whole game. I was keeping tempo with them the whole game because I was hitting draw triggers and just keeping tempo and just going board swing, board swing. <laughs> like it's it's kind of insane because you have all these are kind of I I don't know about the kind of other players, but I find there's like very little more because obviously I've, I've, where I've been playing a lot more of the TCG recently. I'm kind of finding a lot of pleasure in finding that moment where you play a card that you just found and like a, like a spicy tech choice, basically. And just that moment when your opponent just goes, hang on a second, can I, can I read that card? What does that card do? And you're like, yes, yes, he can't play against this. He doesn't know. <laughs> it's the same feeling as like being in someone's chat and being like, oh, they don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. 
<laughs> there's like a moment like that in the G anime. I think it's in like Stride Gate or something where, she, where like one of the opponents uses a card and then Shion's like, wait a second, I'm gonna look at your like drop zone or whatever. And, that, and I'm like, that's the most realistic moment in any card game anime ever. <laughs> No, oh yeah, but... Shion was the one that introduced everybody to check how many triggers left in your deck. <laughs> but but yeah. asterisk, Giro was the worst era ever. Strides were so yeah, overpowered. No, oh my god. The thing is, strides, so strides compared to the original show were very powerful, but the thing is it was one of those things where like, if I give everybody machine guns, or if I give everybody nukes, it's still balanced warfare. It's it's not like it's like early Giera was like hello yes you have a gun you have a wet noodle battle it out boys and it's like and then later on you're just like oh everybody just has tactical nukes and black ops teams okay cool cool I guess like neat you you all have zero dragons and you all have geese if you want like worst case scenario you just have a win card like it's fine it's fine it's cool it's cool it's easy like I don't know, do you think we're ever gonna end up with like zero exclusive content possibly or do you think that might fragment the game further into three separate because as, we're going to assume for a moment that Overdress is going to be a soft reboot like G was, so it, it's going to carry on. Let, let's assume that for a moment. Do you think that there's, there's going to gonna be a further fracture, so there's going to be standard players, premium players, and zero players? What do you think? Like, I mean, how do you think it's going to work? Technically, we already have those, don't we? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but in the sense of like, because obviously standard has things, premium doesn't. Premium doesn't necessarily. Well, premium has like, because where some of the restrictions are format based. So like, you can play in a main with lot and premium, but not standard. But then. If we end up with zero exclusive content, will there not be a lot of tension with standard and premium players being like, well, why don't we have it? Because at that point, zero is almost, in a sense, like branched off of Vanguard, in a sense, if that makes any sense. I'm, I'm trying to like word it correctly. But, like, Dan, they would have to get past, like, there are standard cards that could bleed into zero, just mm -hmm. remove the gifts and reword it properly. You could see this never catching up, but it mm -hmm. is a possibility. That we could get exclusives and i think that would shift but i it would be a very hard turn but i think actually i'm not the one to answer this <laughs> actually having said that haven't we already gone that way with the whole life collaborations because we have we now have exclusive cards to zero because we have the two hollow life collaborations on the japanese side but they're vanillas they don't i mean they're still cards though <laughs> I mean, I mean we also have the Cray Elementals. You could use that as an argument, too. Yeah, man, premium one Zazen. You could play Zazen with them. Dude, imagine, imagine like, beating somebody in your locals with some random, like, VTuber. Like, someone on, like, 15k VTuber. JJ just there, like, experiencing pain for a moment. <laughs> you could just see it overlay with, like, the pain meme. With, like, the pain comment different fight made last a couple weeks ago. <laughs> just, like, overlay. Just, like, agony. When you don't see your dude and you get the zeals and you're like, speaking of that though, what I really want is I want to see Etrange Spider Man in Carbite Vanguard Zero. That would be great. JJ's <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Dude, I'm like, thinking about it. Did you just um, say like, is this what Joey feels it... like? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like, yeah. what um. But that was a collaboration, though. That was a collaboration mm. way back when with Toby Toby Maguire's uh, Spider Man. Like just like you have um, Milena, what's her name again? Milena Markovich? Oh, the, the, yeah, the the lady from Resident Evil. Yeah, the, the woman who had the ad. Yes. Yeah, because yes. she has her own it. card too, as well. Mm. Well, so does Daigo now. We're not getting it, yep. but so does Daigo. Well, no, Daigo already has. I think it's the second one. Daigo you? had his own he had card. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. So Vanguard Zero in general has its own, like very huge design space as to potential cards, potential support, potential a lot of things that they can bring on. If they bring her back on again to I don't know to promote the game again, who knows? Maybe she might have probably played the game because how she held the cards was obvious that she has <clears throat> played card games. I'm not. <laughs> I was going to say something else instead. Um... We can always bleep it out. <laughs> and if anybody wants to look these cards up, it's integral, I think. <laughs> Dude, could you imagine if we ever like if we ever had a cro like a collaboration with some Nintendo mobile game? We're like I cheat Smash, I Kai, Kai and Smash win. <laughs> like Sma Smash Five comes. Oh, actually no, Smash Six comes out, and it, it just has like Vanguard characters. Imagine getting terrorized by MLB in in zero, going, you know what? That's it. I'm done. Turning on Smash, and suddenly like MLB just claps you again. You're like, bruh, <laughs> like what is this? I was, 
I, I was probably imagine you like absorb no, your stocks. Yeah, yeah, go before you, um, Dango, Dango or something before then. He'll just be sanctuary guarding you. Yeah, it's, you know your guard is just him going like whoosh. <laughs> 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 just imagine you consume what? two of your stocks and get deal triple damage for the rest of the game. I want Minecraft Steve in my new Nectar deck. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Their shirts are green, man. It checks out. He's he's a Neo Nectar unit. Minecraft Steve reverse. No, it's just going to be exploding <laughs> zombies. Now, now that you mention it, Enderman would be a great Dark regular card. <laughs> Dude, who needs Shaharot, man? Shaharot <laughs> Vampire now. Nah, that's that's 2015 stuff. Get that out of my face. I need I need some I need some peak 2009 Enderman. Like, let's go. Let's do it easiest stuff you've ever seen but like in terms of like so at the moment like you kind of you go and you guys obviously because i want this fan to not just be about the game necessarily but about you guys as well because mm -hmm. you know like where do you guys see yourselves going with it do you see there's possibly some stuff that could be added like some what, what sort of like quality of life changes would you like to see and how what would you like to go with the game going forward so it's almost like a two-part question I, I love how like none of us are answering because we're actually thinking about it. I'm like, oh god, I've never thought about this. <laughs> nah, I, I technically have my instant answer, but I don't want to be the person to hog the mic again. Um, I want to choose when to use my PG. Mm. That's a really good one, actually. Yeah. Because you can't change it on the fly. You have to commit in, in advance. Do I want to play a limit break deck or do I not? And that's the PG you go off of. Yep. Like... And I want to control my damage zone, mm. so I want to choose yeah. the minutes I heal. Because mm. I think nothing feels. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, uh, yeah, I don't <clears throat> even know. Uh, honestly, personally, the biggest thing I want, and I haven't even figured out how it would work, is I just think another game mode would be cool. Like a more mm. just kind of silly, like mm. fun one to just kind of really. Because, like, ranked. Like ninety percent of the game is ranked. It's like mm. you go to deck, then you go and rank. It's called the chore. Cool. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, it's not even necessarily like a criticism. Like someone mm. could say, like the game is focused mm. and knows what it wants to do. But at the same time, I think a more like silly game mode where you can kind of like maybe it has like more like matchmaking perimeters you can set up and go. Oh, I want to specifically go against this kind of deck mm. or. If you can like turn certain rules on and off, or mm. be, or like turn off limits and stuff, like, uh, or, like for example, you could turn off like the like you could turn on the ability to just clan mix whatever you want. Mm. So like extreme fight, like literally. an extreme fight toggle. Yeah, exactly. Just like a, mm. a more silly, f especially like I mean, again, I'm thinking about this from a content creator, but like mm. the amount of video you'd be able to get out of that kind oh, of yeah. thing, where you're like, I could just build literally any deck I want, you know? Mm. Like even turn off the the rules the TCG itself has, where it's like I'm going to build a deck that's just forty different perfect cards. Actually, because the interesting <laughs> part is you might find um because uh, this kind of reminds me of and in, in, I know some other games have it, but Hearthstone has a game mode called Tavern Brawl, uh, which is a yeah, game yeah. mode that changes every week, but has like wacky rule sets. They can break. I think one of the ones that I used to enjoy was uh your entire deck because your decks are thirty cards. You pick between one and two cards, and it just clones them until you have a full deck of them. So you almost get like these like weird yeah. and wacky rules every single month, every single week. Uh, so it's almost like something people look forward to because you don't know what it is until it comes out. So you almost, as a content creator, you have something new every single week. And some of them might make a comeback, yeah. but some of them might not. Yeah, that's exactly the kind of thing I'd love to see from the game. Just a bit more mm. variety, because I will say it's good at like knowing what it wants to do and what it wants to be. It's nailed that part down. But I think to get people to like stay interested for the long run, having like little unpredictable elements like that would go a long way. Mm. No, for sure, for sure. My major thing I would love to see is actually balancing of every clan where they just stop giving love just to one clan and mm. <laughs> overpowering them. Like, let's say Graham Blue definitely needed his Kakaitis to do something more than just gain 5k. Like, oh, let's give Gold Paladin check four, though. Why? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> I get that they were trying to make it budget-friendly because, again, they were just going to make it clan ladder-friendly. Mm. But, again, I definitely agree with changing the modes. I definitely agree with... Yeah, I want to guard the attack earlier on in the game so when I don't have to worry about it. Or, you know, make it so that I don't die to 20 crit. Mm. <laughs> Laughs in messianic. 
<laughs> no, Gauntlet Buster. It's Gauntlet Buster. <laughs> Actually, let's make it so that Narukami isn't like the overfall falling like king right now that just dominates you uh, next you know next what three weeks or so it's not gonna be that powerful mm. yeah we're getting jewel knights we're gonna we're about to get our cheeks clapped by some jewel knights yeah <laughs> and then the following month it's kagero back again woo, woo. <laughs> jay just says like, jay says like it's my boy it's my no boy I, don't really like, I don't like dauntless that much really but you used to quite like no. the end Hmm? You yeah, used to play the end It's not Dauntless now, is fair, it? Fair, fair. <laughs> the end and Dauntless are two separate cards. True, true. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. I, uh, I think it was during a time I also took a little bit from Vanguard, too. Because mm. I just didn't like... Uh, I don't like Kagura at that point. Mm. Isn't there an Overlord that is a break ride? Yep. Yeah, Yeah, just a normal Draconic Overlord. I can't remember what the break ride does. But I just remember it was decent. Uh, I think you did uh, yeah, just attack the rear guard restand. Discard one. Fair. 10k. Hmm, not bad. That's not terrible, I guess. Yep. It'll be kind of interesting just seeing how, how Zero does going forward, because I know when they made the um, when they made the friend fights a thing, and they added the perimeters for tournament mode and time limit, like, I, I no, as a Pale Moon player, I know I'm, so, I know I'm biased here, uh, please, mm -hmm. please, please longer time limits in turns, like, I don't like this. It feels like you're almost punished yeah. for not playing helmet decks. You're like, I want to yeah, think through this turn. Time out. What? <laughs> I run into a lot of Pelman players who are like just doing their own thing, and then like, wait a second, and then that turn changes before they even attack me. <laughs> yeah, the the game just grabs yeah. your mic and goes, "I'm gonna get, I'm gonna let you finish." But <laughs> streaming wise, it's tough too because you got to pay attention to the clock and hmm. talk, and it's like. Hmm. And I will admit I've gone salty quite a few times of, over the game, just going, yeah, no, and just, like, takes the mic away from me and just hands it to my opponent. I'm like... There's, like, um, as, like, an Angel Feather main, because I have to mention that a lot, because that's, like, my thing. Hmm. Uh, there's, a, there's a specific combo oh. uh, that, that will, like, almost always, like, get me in danger of running out of time, and that's, the, like, you throw out Metatron, and then, like, you take two cards in an out of, you throw out no steel as well and then you like switch out cards from your damage zone and then you use Metatron to put no steel back in out and then in the damage zone again and then you use no steel's ability again and like you kind of keep doing that while like, you keep throwing cards in and out and each time you do that your back row uh, uh, pegasuses are like just going like massive numbers as it goes and that like move in combination just takes so long that mm. the game kind of gets impatient with me. It should like with that move, like power bonus bonuses, should not trigger the time to continue. It should hmm. stop the time for a second and let the powers. I feel like animations shouldn't step. count either. I feel. Or just remove the animation. Mm. This should be that toggle, yeah. <laughs> or, or have a toggle to just remove the animation, saves you a lot of time and trouble. Because kind of being... yeah, I, I shut that off the um, hmm. cutscene animations. Because like it was like in, in going back to that because when we talk about Austin, like it, I remember um, in the beginning of the game they had a similar issue. Uh, because it was a card that exists called Nosdomu, uh, whose effect was set your turn time, set both players' turn timers to 15 seconds. And you'd have a loop in the beginning where animations did count towards that, where you could stack so many animations you just cancel your opponent's turn, because your animations would overflow into theirs and then end to theirs, and it comes back to yours, and they can't do anything while they're playing out. So your opponent just lost turns. Astrius, then, how do you feel about the whole competitive and non-competitive aspect of it because you think of it more or less from a creative standpoint so you would like to have like a a lab mode a free-for-all sort of battle royale sort of thing for yourself but what what would you think about the competitive aspect of the game yeah see that is the interesting thing because i feel like out of all the content creators and stuff i'm the one who cares least <laughs> about like actually climbing because basically the way i've always looked at it yeah, with card games in general is I will always find the weird interesting deck that doesn't necessarily always win or do well in tournaments but when you do get the win with it it's like the most satisfying thing in the world and so that's the reason I like the idea of more game modes and stuff because to me quickly searching up a different fight video and finding a deck list and then you know using crafting materials and stuff to build the card you need to get that deck and then going to ranked and then just kind of spamming it out that's not really a measure of skill like you were saying it, it's more just a who you know has the best deck and um it spends the most time in ranked mode and so i feel like more 
game modes and stuff that are like, okay, here's like uh, a stipulation you have, here's something you need to work around, here's like a rule set specific to this like event or game mode or whatever i think that would reward more like creative thinkers who are like okay i can build a deck or work with a play style that works around this stipulation ranked mode as it is it is fun it's all right but it, it definitely doesn't feel like a measurement of skill it just feels like whoever could build the good deck the fastest because vanguard zero especially because well one it's based on an already some TCG, but also it uh, is behind the Japanese version. So the global version of Vanguard Zero always has a solved meta. Like before the cards are even released, we already know what like decks are the best. And so we can save up for them beforehand and everything. And because of that, like ranked mode isn't really a measure of skill. It's just, okay, I saved up for this deck. I built this deck. I slapped the cards out. I win. And I definitely think that's kind of the biggest weakness in regards to Zero, because it's fine, it's fun, it does the job well. But I think that in terms of someone like me, if I, want, if, I, if I wanted to see a challenge in the game, I'd rather it be a more kind of natural sort of challenge, and in, in like it's challenging different aspects of how you play, and, and making you think on the fly, and, and, and kind of solve problems within a game, rather than just spamming out like the best card that season hmm. so you're kind of like suggesting similar to what we do with hard and very hard like you have to think around that play style if they eliminated the auto fight yeah, they may yeah. have to play it out and give double the vp for it to that could be a nice out. game mode that could be a nice yeah. game mode hmm. yeah because yeah. then it makes a lot of decks become viable or even harder to play against because they can go out hmm yeah, yeah. Because I, I think in, in reference, but actually, since you were saying, obviously, that we seem to have like a solved meta as soon as the set comes out. Um, I, I, I don't know, because I you mentioned that we, because we have, we're behind JP. Uh, and as much mm -hmm. as there are certain changes to cards being made, um, I don't know, I, I wonder what you guys think about this as well. But to a sense, I think, in a sense, by basing it off an existing card game and ex basing it off of releasing it in an order that has already happened, in a sense, we already almost have a solved meta. Because we always know what's the next thing coming. We always know what's good. We always know if a good card is coming next set. Like when, you know, when Grey Nature first came out, we were all sitting going, oh, it's okay. And then JJ is just sitting in the stream going, yeah, but Polaris, though. Don't worry, Polaris, yeah. though. But Polaris, though. <laughs> but, big, but, but Big Bear Boy is yeah. about to come around the corner. And then, obviously, lo and behold, Big Bear Boy comes, Big Bear Boy stomps, and we carry on. Like, And it's, it's sort of like, in a sense, by basing it off of an existing franchise, an existing IP... And, and at least releasing it in order that has already transpired in the past. We've all lived through it. It's the same way as the way Italy just got GBT1. So Italy has its own Vanguard scene now. They're printing their own things. They are currently on GBT1. In a sense, we have the next three years of their metagame already solved, as it has been for about five years. Like, we know what's coming in their way. We know everything that's going to come their way. We know everything that's going to play. So in a sense, like, as much as there is ingenuity, and there could be, like, the rare, you know diamond in the rough like godly build none of us have ever thought of in a sense by basing on something that's already happened we've they've almost doomed themselves to a solved meta where it's a game that doesn't get to enjoy um the kind of the grace of the players finding out the new meta and finding out what's good because we already know that but that's where zero and the irl car game are two separate entities they're not the same hmm. in the slightest Again, yeah. different play styles. Hmm. Like, Blau, when it first came out, wasn't that devastating. Hmm. But when it came over here, it was the best budget deck and could wreck even most top-tier decks hmm. in Zero. And I think to pile on with what Kyle is also saying, too, as well, it's sort of like, because, with the, the Polaris thing also as an example, like, because, you know, from my own knowledge that I know, you know, we still have like a lot of cards to still come out. We still got Chat Noir, we still got Testafox, we still got the Brick Right for uh, a lot of the Zoo Nation support, uh, Mantis support, uh, Machining support that's still supposed to be coming out as well. The dynamic of a lot of the cards are also going to change because, of course, JP and English have different play styles. Of course, we know that. And then there's also that the cards are also different from their TCG counterparts. 
which also expands way more on deck building capabilities which also mm. makes people like asterisk also pretty happy as well because you mm. get very nifty combos that you can also play that i also saw on or that i covered or did a little commentary talking about it as well i think it was during one of the last the, the day one or day two uh autumn uh championship tournaments that uh jp was streaming they actually showed a bermuda break ride mill deck it was the most fun thing I have ever seen played before. I was very happy that I saw it because I love decks that have alternate win conditions. Hmm. You don't always have to kill your opponent to do damage to win the game. You can kind of just stall it out and just hmm. deck them out. It's funny. I think hmm. it's hella funny. So I, I really do hope that Bushy does kind of go around that way that finding a deck that does something different makes because I'm, i probably want to play, play it it's super fun it uses like alina and the draw bermuda grade one and it just kind of just bounces all that grade one the entire time super funny to do <laughs> so i i want them to keep on doing that and i hope that we get win condition based decks and players don't get scared and run off and saying well lock and link joker are too powerful friend they have to cb4 to lock your board and you already announced down. that it's going to the back. They're going to print more cards that say back row and leave the front row from doing it. Like, sure, Zero Infinity is pretty strong, but it costs CB1 to do it. And if you just keep your opponent on one, on like three damage before you go into your combo turn, or you choose to give them the four damage to make their limit break ineffectual, they're going to be stuck on 4 damage, and if they don't heal, they can kill them. There's multiple ways of dealing with a very precarious situation. It's just that sometimes the ingenuity of players just don't... they don't want... Hmm. Mm. They're like I'm, I'm not going to say anything else. Go ahead. Like their, their play style is almost <laughs> setting stone. You were walking into a trench on that one. Yeah. So you, just to answer, so are, you, are you basically trying to like suggest that the, the idea that players are almost scared of changing their place of so like but this is how i want to play and the way i want to play doesn't work therefore deck is op instead of just modifying the way they play the game that is a very subtle way of saying what i wanted to say <laughs> yes yes i like that better hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's like I you know like, like my it's... my ezel keeps hitting limit break and it's op because it keeps spawning stuff and you're like have, have you tried leaving him on three damage uh no can you do that even then they still with the new mechanic wise it's the but, limit the damage hitters do mm. give you a free card and mm. again even putting them at three sometimes mm. doesn't stop that no no sometimes this, these days usually putting them to four is just better because mm. it's yeah. like you, you you just put them to four and if they happen to heal it sucks but mm. then they just go to three and you just try it again Usually now it is just okay to put them to four. If your hand is too weak, leave them at three, and then just force them to have it. Hmm. If it puts you behind, yeah, it's it sucks. But like, actually, especially speaking of like, in when it comes to sort of like event clans, in the sense, like you know, you were talking about kind of Grand Blue earlier and Tachikaze and and obviously New Nectar to an extent. Like in as the sh as the game goes on, obviously those clans become main character clans and or at least more widely supported clans. Um, I've kind of for the long time been of the opinion that we shouldn't have event clans so much as like event archetypes maybe uh, but like what do you guys think would happen with these event clans when Night Rose comes out when Asha comes out when you know when, when Night well, sorry, I was saying Night Rose earlier like when these sort of like other like big name like cards and you know and support comes to them do you think they'll stay clans for clan events or do you think they'll we'll get into a habit of like shifting in and out of clan events I think they'll move like I I, I can't see Asha being event exclusive. Mm. I can't see any universe where that happens. So mm. they're just gonna have to make a new set that's just like the the try free set and then you get Asha for there's no way that's gonna be an event thing. Mm. So I think they are just gonna switch them out depending on the generation or whatever. Mm. Uh yeah, basically. I I I can't like Asha is one of the most popular cards like ever. I can't see that being an event card, like not mm. really. I, I can though. Like, there's again when you introduce try three, you could literally keep Neo Nectars constantly matching up. You just rotate. Once we get enough event clans, you can just guarantee them to be lined up set by set, hmm. where they just fit in. Because again, once you get into G era, yes, that is where you can now just line it up. 
these clans are in this set. Now here is uh, Neo Nectars or Night Rose or you know Asha mm. Night Rose. You know um, mm. Yu Yu Tsui. Um, then um, what's his name? Um, Nubatama's lead because that's probably going to be oh, the next. Oh um, yeah, uh, Shiranui, sure, isn't it? Shiranui, sure, yeah. Yeah. Like you can con consistently just plop them in. Hmm. The sets might shrink down, but then you just have guaranteed. Where I think Event Clan is probably the best thing they do, because again, now you don't have this big card pool. You have one focal card pool where you're just guaranteed to get the cards you want. And now where popular clans now, you don't have to struggle with all this bloat. Hmm. You deal, you have a straight pack set, and I think keeping it as an event clan and keeping these as event clans will just guarantee popularity and people would spend more money into event clans if especially like if it's asha night rose and stuff like that because of the fact is they don't have to dive in too much but you just make it so that but would you spend the gems for it no but like the interesting part is in vanguard like there was all these are cool like like out of the box mind games you could play with people where like you'd pick skins that could like fit multiple clans like say you're playing yuri but then your opponents in their head is like okay because you don't because you can see them before they reveal the icons before they, they added the newer clan icons if you come up against a yuri you're like okay this is either pale moon oh sorry sorry no pale moon. this is either ott or dp but i play very differently and mulligan very differently against the two so you're almost adding this extra layer of like mind games with people like okay let's see if they guess correctly because if they get this wrong, then, you know, if they Morgan wrong, I could just get a free game off that. Like all these I, I've seen, like, Morgan differently to anybody. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I've seen, like, a lot of people say the uh, wreck his whole thing, where he says Kuhn Kuhn right every single time she writes anything. It really annoys them. <gasps> so, like, when I always play Wrecker, I like the idea that, like, I frustrate people. It's mind games. Not being able to play <laughs> Imagine, like, tilting people <laughs> with your skins. <laughs> oh no, you just play Mega Colony now and go, <laughs> But like, actually, Whatever he says. In terms of like, just kind of the, the general like, future of Zero, is there anything you guys would like to see possibly in terms of like, it, more interaction perhaps between Bushiroad and creators? Because I know Bushiroad has obviously been trying to expand a lot with the creator support program they have over on the Japanese side. Um, do you think there's possibly something they could bring over to Zero to perhaps help promote? Like I know some other games have, um, like you know, like when a new set comes out, card announcement. I think they did with Premium Collection this year, uh, where they had content creators reveal cards. And as much as we all know what's coming up in Zero, a new player might not. If you're new to Vanguard, you might not know. Do you think there's possibly a, a, a benefit in recruiting their popular creators and popular personalities to unveil cards coming up instead of just like silently posting it on their Twitter? Do you think there's possibly a case oh, to be made between more cooperation? A, a clickbaity YouTube thumbnail does more marketing for any video game than a tweet does, nine times out of ten. So of course they'd benefit from it. Hmm. I just don't know if they like I I mean it's not that they don't care. It's more so like I think the problem is that most of the big Vang I mean I haven't done my research here, so I could be wrong, but most of the big Vanguard Zero content creators are English and play the global version, so like I don't know if they like were behind. So like nah. unless it's something like different fight who plays the Japanese version as well, there's not much of a reason to get people like us hmm. to reveal the game hmm. their cards if we're so far behind anyway. Hmm. But at the same time, not every player is aware of the oh sorry. Not every player follows the Japanese version. You could very well be a global player that knows there's a Japanese version, but just because it's there doesn't necessarily mean that you're following that. If you're a casual player, you know, like JJ was saying, if you're a casual player logs in a couple times a week to just do their thing, like, you don't necessarily know what's coming up. You don't necessarily keep up with the game. Maybe you're brand new to Vanguard. You're not even aware that there's a physical card game involved. Like, to you, it's just this cool mobile game you play. Like, do you think maybe to those people it might be more beneficial? Because uh, I'm personally the opinion that people need personalities to latch on to sometimes to keep on with hobbies like there's a sense of community especially now so i, I mean, think yeah i mean there's nothing stopping global creators from just talking about japanese cards now <laughs> hmm. i cover it from time to time does. yeah hmm. like so i mean we could just keep doing that <laughs> hmm. and, and i'm sure i want to like support like in no. officially endorsed versions of that hmm. the problem <laughs> is mushy <laughs> 
is grabbing pretty much no name people that are just big in content creating because I've found besides different fight there's they had like three people that were just out of the blue just cell phone gamers now all of a sudden playing zero and advertising yeah. their game look who do we got shady like, penguin boys whoo! like is it wasn't he one of the, the, the big ones phone. in the beginning yeah he was there in the beginning and then he dropped off because there was too many vp farmers and he did not want to play ever again that's fair that's fair though that was a that was a rough period but thankfully they fixed it or at least they, they addressed it relatively quickly addressed it yeah but like yeah it's better than but like jj how, how would you guys feel about like the idea of perhaps more collaboration between the the game developers and, and the people playing the game because like the sleeves the, the sleeves we're getting are cool you know, the the ones you get every set, like, they're cool and all, but, like, I don't know how it is for you guys, but for me, it's go to bed, wake up, find your gift box, and go, cool. Like, that that's as far as my interaction with that goes. Yeah. I mean, that's what the Hollow Live is doing. They're having their virtual YouTubers. Mm. You know, but, what, I don't expect all our faces to be plastered on um, hmm. sleeves in Vanguard Zero no, of course, here. of course. No, <laughs> no, in that sense. In that sense, would just probably general. scare people. Hmm. Then just instead of like general collaboration, like as in even like, I uh, well I mean not necessarily because like, their events are quite a bit bigger, but in terms of, like just generally like collaborating with with various personalities in terms of like I was saying like either reveals, uh, maybe like tournament organization because I know we have the ambassador program that they have, but all that is is just you host the tournament, uh, we'll add ten packs. Like don't worry about it, you will get a cool banner out of it, but like that's not necessarily corporate. Like as much as much as it is more, than, it's a lot more than nothing obviously but it's not necessarily a collaboration in the same way as like if i were to reach out to you and do and work on something together it's more like a you organize and we'll just send him some stuff you know in the mail basically yeah, here's the thank you for um doing mm. something we can't do at the moment yeah like how do you how do you and Carl feel that you know they could possibly implement stuff like that in the future uh, i'll let him answer first mm. i mean it would be amazing, but Bushy's track record is like zero to none on that. Personally, I've seen pretty much different fight is really the big one, and then it was the European side that literally got the reveal end hmm. of it. No, no, um, US related side I think didn't get a card to reveal, but hmm. it was like all European side, which nothing against that side. I just felt like. Why didn't like other big names besides the Europe side get that? I personally know I might be wrong. There might have been a person that I didn't know personally, hmm. but it just feels like the U.S. side of what she wrote is just doesn't interact with their community in, at all. Like hmm. it's sad to say, but it is true. Hmm. Like. European, I've heard the Europe side of it at least is very more in delve with their creators and stuff like that. If I've heard correctly, hmm. I don't know. I'm not over there to personally feed that. It's more is because we were more animated in what we wanted, I guess. I think it's because of the fact that Chris is one of the biggest names in the game, and it was it wasn't only just him. It was also um, because a lot of the players or people who are who currently got their cards revealed were also people who also went to the world championships and spoke directly to the executives at Bushy Road as well. So oftentimes with what Bushy needs is not usually like written interactions with each other. Sometimes they're still with the traditional mindset that sitting down with them and speaking with them, they have a better idea and understanding of who they're dealing with and who they're talking to, hmm. which is still a habit that is done today and even though we are living a bit more modern times and skype calls and zoom calls are a bit you know a bit more prevalent sadly enough um for them it's more important to kind of sit down and just talk to you as a content creator hmm. um and you also need to get uh if you feel that there wasn't a lot of representation then it was also probably on whoever you know whoever you think is a big person in Vanguard Zero. Ask them to say like, hey, could you talk to Bushi to maybe get something going or whatever? And they get in contact with whatever, whatever um, 
they can either talk to Singapore, but then again, Singapore sometimes doesn't really answer. I guess you could talk to Home Office and JP, but it really depends if any of them either speaks English or whether they want to bother speaking to you. So, I mean, yeah. I've sent emails countless times to the English US side, and it's kind of bland, flat. Like, it really depends on. What what you said though? It also depends yeah. on what you said as a hmm. as a talking point. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's like it's not say something they can they can respond to necessarily. Well, of course they might not necessarily even know, because uh, I don't know how how it is. But some some corporates are more like may, head office gives marching orders to everybody else, and everyone just kind of does their thing. They're not really they're not really like autonomous zones, as it were. They're they're just you know they're basically like the local spokesperson for you know home office. But I know it's, it's, it's kind of on, on my end, like, as far as I'm aware, that's sort of, like, main, the main topics I was going to have, like, did you guys have anything you possibly wanted to, to bring up as well, possibly, to discuss about Zero and your sides? For you guys? Uh, I, honestly, I didn't come prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just like, I'm just going to show up and I'm going to hope they've, that, uh, nah, I, that's a low-key death, now I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't really have anything particular to discuss or anything. Uh, game's cool though. Mm. No, the game <laughs> is fantastic. Kind of Astros, yeah. when are you coming back? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm already. I mean, hey, you know, the second Zerakiel appears, I'm doing the deck profile on that. Ooh, he's <laughs> oh, man, man's back in two weeks. Then let's go, let's go. Yeah, I'm, like I, I'm, I'm still playing. I just, mm. it, I guess it's more a case of like, you know, everyone already does the deck profiles, mm. so it's like, I don't really have anything to add, you mm. know. Uh, you might change it two cards or three, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Um, hmm. Well, I'll, I'll mess around with things here and there, but like, hmm. I just kind of, I, I'm very off the cuff. I don't plan things out, as you hmm. can probably tell. Hmm. Same. Same, to be honest. The one hmm. thing I will have to ask between, how do you all just deal with the fatigue of burnout with Zero? Because eventually you do feel this kind of hmm. repetitive grind fest that it is and becomes almost like a chore and then it's like you'll start losing repetitively and you're like I want to take my phone and go wee mm. I'll, I'll let you play something else for a bit basically <laughs> uh, that's the thing is like Vanguard Zero isn't the only game and it's like mm. while it's like one of the very few games that we like publicly stream and play I know like we play other games too but like I just go off and do other stuff for a bit, basically. There's no reason to grind that much. And so if I'm ever like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like this, I just do something else, basically. Hmm. What about you, JJ? As, as the person who plays it most. Well, unfortunately, I probably might have something <laughs> mentally <laughs> wrong with me, I guess. Um, I, I like playing the game. Hmm. Uh, I like playing the game a lot. But there are times, yes, I would get frustrated and get burnt out, and that's why I kind of alternate between either playing the TCG, which I do play Remote Fight Mondays, by the way, for anybody who's interested in playing any Remote Fight TCG stuff, you know, physical card game TCG sounds pretty fun. If you're scared, it's okay. We also play with proxies, so you don't have to worry about costs or anything like that. Oh, uh, shameless plug. Super, <laughs> super shameless plug. It's all good. Uh, premium, <laughs> premium superior format, debate in the comments below. Thank you very much. No, I just kind of just do what I want, really. I just, if I feel like playing Vanguard Zero, there's oftentimes, I think like last week, Wednesday, um, I just didn't feel like doing Zero that day, and I just didn't do it. We lost a hell of a lot of viewers. And oftentimes, if you're known for just being the Vanguard Zero guy, it just sort of just makes you a nobody in another mm -hmm. game, you know? But I just kind of like doing what I want to do. And mm -hmm. if, I lose vi if I lose viewers, but I still have fun... And there's still people who enjoy watching me play. Hmm. I think I'm okay with that. I, I can I can deal with I could deal with losing some people. But uh, I mean, I've already hit the point where like I've got more subs than I thought I'd get anyway. So like <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Everyone's always like, I want to reach this sub goal or whatever. And I'm like, I'm surprised you've stuck with me. So I'm just gonna do whatever the hell I want and just <laughs> hope you stay. If you watch it, you watch it. If you don't, <laughs> no, whatever. I, I mean, I don't mean I'm not that coarse with it. I mean, it's just sort of I just sort of like I hope. They enjoy it. Hmm. I would like them yeah, to yeah. enjoy it, but if they don't, it's okay. Do, do you, you think know, that... not everybody likes that stuff because people have been constantly asking me to play either Minecraft or <laughs> RuneScape or 
um, Terraria or what's the other one? Undertale. Yes, you Zeus. Ask me about played on the team a long time. God. <laughs> I mean, I would love to see you actually do an Undertale stream, JJ. I, I quake. I shake. I, I, out of any of that, I would actually love to see you make all the decisions in an Undertale game and just to see your outcome. Do, do you guys actually think potentially that, like, because obviously, because you, you obviously Asterix and JJ were mentioning it, I'll, I'll discuss on the burn in a second, but like, that perhaps part of content creation as a whole. Uh, you know, be it be it YouTube, be it written content, be it streaming, uh, be it you know deck profile, be it anything at all. Uh, do you think a part of that is potentially less so about? Uh, it's it's more about transitioning from being about the game by being pigeon held by the game, uh, to more being like a, a personality cult in a sense, where you get to the point where people don't come because they want to. You want at the end of it, you want your net result to be fewer people coming because they want to see somebody play zero, and more time more because because they want to come and like hang out with you. Like you specifically, because I, oh, I find that in streaming is a big thing. I love niche stuff. I love mm. being. Yeah, that's the thing. Cause it's like I could, uh, like you could totally try and make like the most broad sort of videos ever that like appeal to as many people as possible. Mm. But at the same time, I think there's a super like appealing thing about making weird videos that like a handful of people are like. Oh yeah, this is my favorite thing ever. Mm. Rather than just kind of being something everyone minds. And I kind of think go make vanguard stuff and it's like on a base level that already kind of unites us and like hmm. if we wanted to be bigger trading card game youtubers we could be like pokemon or geo or magic or whatever but like there's an appeal to talking about like the weirder smaller thing and, hmm. and i really enjoy that you know like i don't hmm. really care about the numbers it's more just like what interesting weird stuff can we do today hmm I think it's actually pretty big to like find yourself a community that is unified over something. So it's kind of insane to just look, even look at Can't Fight Con. Look at all the different panels we've got going on. We've kind of got everything under the sun, and it's the idea that all of us are still unified under the banner of Can't Fight Vanguard. Like we've got everything from, you know, from Vanguard tubing to written content to a podcast by podcasters, like to Zero to the TCG to we have an entire panel for the previous three world champions. Like we've got, we've got kind of like everything and anything. Like we've got, you know, almost any, any, all, all these different things are still, we're all still united by our, our kind of like love for the game, which is kind of insane. You know, when you think about it, because you just look at just how many different people there are from different walks of life, and it's the idea that any, all of us can still turn around to each other and just go like, "What a remote fight!" And everyone's like, "Yeah, sure, all right." Like, <laughs> there's like so much to it, and it's actually quite, quite kind of, in a sense, kind of like heartwarming to see all that sort of unity come from from such a diverse group of people at least at least to me i don't know i don't know about about everybody else i, I would hope that's something that other people resonate with as well oh um, yeah definitely this is like i I've, I've been in see uh, it's time to get deep guys no oh. um i will oh. say like I, i've been in like a lot of different fandoms and fan bases and stuff over the years and i'm kind of one of those people where like i switch between stuff so fast that, like I mm. kind of don't really feel like I belong anywhere, but this is a place where I'm like, this is the place I belong, and this is like, so I will say this is genuinely like mm. the most welcoming community that I've been in personally, because there's always like so many infights and arguments, and like Vanguard mm. has that too, but it feels like at the end of the day with Vanguard, if people disagree on stuff, they can still like shake hands and go, yeah, but you know, we still like Vanguard, we still like playing it and stuff, and mm. I feel like there's something to that. Like, I've seen people, like, lose friendships over disagreements within fandoms and stuff, and mm. I don't really see that in Vanguard. I see people shake hands and make up all the time, and I think that's great. Mm. No, 100%. Well, I mean, what is the worst extent of an argument in Vanguard at the moment? Zazen was the Luad. biggest one. Luad not OP. Luad just kind of good. Yeah. Hot yeah, take. Like, Hot again, <laughs> card games, unless you're like known for toxicity in your card games. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> We're not gonna bash card games. Uh, they're not gonna bash card games, come on. True, true. That that's not what you do in I'll this blurt it out, I'll bleep it out, I'll bleep it out. <laughs> yeah. But um you again, it it's all tailored to like with like here in where I am in the northeast of the United States. Hmm. Like Car games have the hardest time coming around to mm. actually be playable because magic is so integrated. And it's amazing that it's sad when my shop sometimes there's there's the people that just don't like 
our community because we're animated and we're like having fun we enjoy our card game differently than most card games mm. and that's usually skeptical for some people mm. you know mm. so because like in my local card shop i see I, whenever i go there i've got like my little group i play vanguard with um thankfully i was introduced to by by a couple of my viewers with shout out to power seeker uh, who i've met in real life now and he's like one of my friends now who i just chill in the card shop with and it's like I have the group that plays it, but when you come more often than not, you get people playing Magic and you know Magic and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. But the actual Vanguard is there's very few people there. And like I remember one of my one of the times I went there, and there was this little kid who was I think oh I say kid he's like fourteen like like thirteen fourteen young kid, and he's like playing he's a kid. <laughs> yeah you know as you know what I mean like he's not like four five four he's like fourteen but like he's still a kid, and like he's playing Messianic and it's like obviously like where we like as a bit of a meme like have our right chance. And it was kind of like heartwarming to see this kid like get really into it and get like super excited and like slamming his cards on the table like you know like he just wrote his favorite card and like that's something like super wholesome about it that i never really see with like maybe it's because we're a medium that like as much as we have an anime we still primarily exist in tcg form in the way that like Yu-Gi-Oh does but Yu-Gi-Oh also has its anime which is like its own separate entity so you can easily be an anime fan without being a fan of the card game or in the sense of like Magic seems a little complicated for kids to get into it. Like, Pokemon has its show and its games and its card games, which are all, like, entirely separate things. Like, you don't... You can cross... Or but a but kid like, facing off an adult kind of starts getting unfair in every event. Yeah, but, like, for example, like... You know, like, and then you have, like, Vanguard, where it's, like... It's almost... It, it, it like, short of, like, standard premium, it doesn't feel like there's too many, like, divisions in the community. It feels like we mm-hmm. are still, like, Vanguard fans. So, like, I can sit down next to a dude, like... You know, next to a kid who's five and a dude who's 30... And just be like, I should first friend was pretty sick though, and everyone's like, yeah, let's go. Like, it's like that sense of like nostalgia. Like, oh, it's almost like a shared community that I don't think um, many many other franchises have. I don't. I can't really think off the top. I have any franchise that necessarily has that. And there's like something super heartwarming about that, at, at least to me. But like, in 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 terms of like the the burnout thing as well. Like, I I don't know about kind of everyone else, but I I know myself. I had a burnout phase pretty bad with the game. Um, especially in the beginning with when first there was all the hacking that was going on then when that was addressed we had the vp farming problem for about a month uh where i remember i had entire like five six hour streams where i didn't bump into like a single player i remember i was i was checking it i, I remember specifically one time i went through a six hour fraud and i didn't play a single real player and that was like made like big burnout vibes uh but thankfully that's been addressed and the game has been great since but i know like i don't know about you but, like i know i had to take like a two-month break at one point effectively to like recharge my batteries and now i've kind of come back to a game that's in a much healthier spot it's a lot more fun to play and it's like it got a more like if if you ever feel like you're you, you know this maybe games getting a little too much you can always just like take a break take it easy i know i know to stop myself from having burnout uh i limit myself to legend 10 every season so i pick up the one promo card just so you know i can have it and one million vp just because if you play it enough you end up hitting it you kind of get to the point where like oh i'm, I'm looking out for collector's purposes i'm not going too hard like i can chill out you can do like a couple legend ranks in a couple hours if it's a quiet day like you know it, it's you go at your own pace you have a good time you chill out with your community uh because i know for me like finding communities like uh you know like biff like jj like to me that was like a massive part in me joining the game staying in the game because jj was obviously recently I've, I've not been able to do as much because of work but for a sort of like four or five month span i'd be in the stream like pretty much all day every day like like that sort of community is like a massive thing in terms of people finding finding this and like finding a home in a community because suddenly you have friends no matter where you go like i can go most into almost every stream and recognize a name and i think there's something like super like genuinely awesome about that in terms of in in, in terms of you know the awesome community as a whole being recognized too hmm. by people that you aren't hmm. in the same time zone is and it's just really wholesome just to say like oh hmm. i know you hmm. Wait, he's here wait what hmm. since when <clears throat> Like, kind of like seeing starstruck when you're not this like hmm. you feel like you're not this big um name in the community but you are known around it hmm. so it's kind of funny just to see that kind of starstruck situation hmm. yeah it's been like super it reminds super awesome. me of like when i first started watching kyle where I, I tuned into one of his streams and like was fairly active in the chat and he was like cool and he was pretty welcoming and everything. And then the very next stream, I went to his chat and he was like, I didn't realize you were a YouTuber. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> are you a YouTuber? 
No, it was because I watched. I didn't put the name to the face <laughs> right away, so I wasn't connecting it. And then all of a sudden, his video went live that night, and I went like, "Oh, that was him." Oh, oh, with him, <laughs> it him. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've been chatting ever since, me and him. Mm. Yep. Yep. Mm. Oh, but you do. Like, how how do you feel about like kind of the the community aspect of Vanguard as somebody who has. Uh, taken a very active part in games like Yu-Gi-Oh! Obviously, having been a commentator for Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments. Like, how do you feel about the Vanguard community in that sense? Or, like, as a whole, I guess. Y'all built different. <laughs> no, um... <laughs> no, but not in a bad sense. Y'all strike but comparatively. Like... <laughs> no, but in a, in, a very, in a very positive sentiment. Y'all are very enthusiastic. Because there's oftentimes I've had people, as most of you probably also had, who talk about the dynamic. I've literally had somebody in my chat speak two hours about why Blaster, uh, why Aichi's MLB, not Masionic, but old school MLB, did not suit him. And Masionic was a better fit for him. Because it was more pure and true to his nature, literally had a philosophical discussion about it. Oh, I remember and that. I was just oh, I sitting that. reading it. I remember that. <laughs> and I was like, "Huh, that just happened." <laughs> okay, that's very that's very true. But I, I love that whole aspect. But the thing mm. is, though, I'm 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 a bit of a nerd. So there's oftentimes when people come in my Discord or not Discord, people come in my chat and talk. It's either I already know them already from either outside of the game. So people when Ashris came in the chat, already knew them. Uh, Kyle came in the chat, already knew them. So a lot of content creators that already came in, I already knew who they were. So it wasn't more or less like I didn't know. It, it just felt very warming, I guess, hmm. to know that people who who I used to watch either in passing or watch pretty regularly. Uh, or people I just kind of talk to on a regular. People mm -hmm. who make content now, I still kind of contact and talk to. So it's very nice to come from different communities and different aspects with different people and see what they're very passionate about and coming here and see what, he, what people here are passionate about mm -hmm. and saying that you guys love this game to death. Um, and the only very saddening part is just sometimes it feels like the game doesn't love back. The company, I mean, not the game itself, but I mean the company. <laughs> Bushy Road, caress me like you love me. <laughs> Bushy, <laughs> just hire one of the content creators, and I promise you, your decks would not be unfair and unbalanced anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm saying still, okay, uh, dude, I'm still on this tinfoil hat moment. Like, you know how they had the problem with Chaos when it first came out? When they were like, when it got mm -hmm. leaked, and it got, dude. The only reason they announced they reannounced that they're hiring playtesters is so the chaos can get leaked again, and they have an excuse for another seven years without playtesters. Tinfoil hat on. This is this is what's happening right now. It's about to get leaked. Chaos is gonna get leaked again. The, it already I'm, did. Dude, I'm gonna get cut. I'm gonna cut all this out. I'm gonna cut all this out of the podcast. The tinfoil hat on. Like I'm cutting this this the cutaway. It's happening. I believe. Chaos got announced the standard. No, 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 I'm saying it's like its ability is going to get leaked again. Because they recently announced that they're hiring playtesters again. They're going to leak the skill again. So they go, look guys, we're just not going to announce Chaos again. And we're, we're not doing playtesters again. But isn't that insane that they won the whole of Giro without playtesters? And, ooh, ooh, weird. Weird. For that time, it was some of the best design <laughs> cards. But, you know, people... And it was centric around your stride and not centric around, you know... a finisher like your strides were the main focal point and your deck wasn't live until you hit your first stride but the thing is i, I also got into discussions with people with like that too as well is that they oftentimes didn't really like strides because of the fact that they liked playing with their main deck they didn't like the whole part of like the Yu Gi Oh esque part of it i think it's because the game became too difficult for some people or people weren't they didn't enjoy it in the same way. And that's okay, because change oftentimes is not welcomed by everybody. It's different for everyone. Hmm. Um, but I, I just get very disheartened and sad when people just don't want to even give it a shot at all. Hmm. I, I become sad at that. You know, at least or give it a that, shot. Or you people know, that are, like, written off premium because they just will not go back to it because they're saying, oh, this was broken, like, hmm. two months ago, but now premium is, like, at its most healthiest i've ever seen in hmm. ages like yeah. 
like all decks have this new way of styles and you're literally playing your standard some decks are just standard plus which is literally your standard deck plus your g-zone hmm. Hmm. boom boom and Bridging to the choir dude <laughs> all you need now is i've been saying this now officially we just need a, one more stride and a G, another um and the next premium collection should be another stride and one g guardian that everybody is equally level with hmm. and now you have a complete g zone that you literally just take your starts you know just buy a premium collection enough to get your stuff you boom one you now have standard plus premium hmm. like no excuse why you can't even build one hmm. and to build on what Kai, uh, kyle said because i i also talked a little bit with with uh, Kai Chen from WCC about this too as well. It's just more or less that, unfortunately, Vanguard looks just go hard, go fast, turn your card sideways, go brr, uh, and sadly enough, defensive options are a little bit lacking. And I liked G Guard for that sentiment. Of course, now that you have V triggers, that you have 20k shield, and you're kind of watching your G Guard, you're watching your shield like, well, you get extra 5k and already have a 20k shield in my hand what's the difference of being one using one over the other sometimes you just get extra g flip you get to use extra hidden abilities and sometimes you know reducing yeah. shield value by 5k is sometimes worth it because it's a trade-off between one of the two and it gives you defensive capabilities where you wouldn't find it you know because yeah. you can also work around like guard restricts you can work around um how much cards you can guard out your hand in that turn you know, sort of, sort of limit, pseudo limitations, and of course, playing against something like OTT does kind of suck. But you, there's different ways of playing against decks like that. But sometimes players, or are just in not... the case of Mary Colony Gradora, that just says nah, nah yeah. nah. you don't, you of don't do nothing. <laughs> of course, right? But it, it's knowing whether or not, hey, do I want to give Gradora any damage to be able to hurt to lock me out of the game? Mm -hmm. Because you can just kind of swing at the rare guards because they want to commit rare guards to the board so they can keep on stalling you out. So you can kind of just swing at your Vanguard in the rear, just draw a card, pass a turn. Stay on grade 2 for a turn extra so they don't get the stride. There's like many, many, many different ways of dealing with stuff in premium or dealing with G units at a time. It's just... It's a lot of thought process. Hmm. Like Just that. And sometimes I get it. Because players just sometimes just don't want to, have to do that, right? Hmm. They just want to flip their cards face up, stand their Vanguard, go to grade 3, and just play the game and have fun. Hmm. Right, playing around win conditions sometimes is not that for everybody. Hmm. No, because they like... left you you know to get away from playing around hmm. that. So yeah. I yeah. do get that whole sentiment. It's like I left Yu Gi Oh for many years because again, not enough time. But I even now, like I still have, I've kept up with ma heroes. Hmm. It's still a lot of comboing and all the other decks just do too much sometimes and you're like hmm. Hmm. <laughs> what's your thoughts on this asterisk uh yeah <laughs> I mean that's the thing the reason I was being so quiet was because I was like no these guys are actually they, they know what I'm talking about uh, I'm actually <laughs> I'm, I'm blaming with this yeah no uh, I guess if we're, if we're, if we're going to mention Yu-Gi-Oh very quickly is man like I mean, first of all, I will say, like, uh, win conditions and that kind of stuff, I, again, I love winning in weird ways rather than just slamming cards down, and boy, the the reason I transitioned from Yu-Gi-Oh! to Vanguard was, man, I was sick and tired of getting OTK. Oh, God. <laughs> that is not a fun experience. <laughs> Thank the Lord we don't need to deal with that, huh? It, it... <laughs> It's kind of like, uh... I was say, the thing is, Yu-Gi-Oh! just reminds me of, like, I don't know if you guys have ever played, like, many fighting games, but Dragon mm -hmm. Ball Fighters had a, had a had a bit of a running joke in the beginning, which was, when your opponent is better than you, or if, they get a, if, or if they're on the same level as you and they have a lucky break, you don't get to play. And that's kind of the way games like Yu-Gi-Oh! felt to me. Which is like, oh, did you, yeah. did you not draw well? Oh, oh, your opponent drew better. Better luck next time, buddy. You get TOD'd, mate. You just get TOD'd. Yeah, so you know? better luck, uh, better luck next time. Has anybody actually been testing out the um new system that they implemented, like around? I think what was it around Jewel Knights came out that we should uh, be getting shortly with uh, the guaranteed grade one, assist, grade two, uh, and grade... I want it. 
JJ, I wanted it yesterday. JJ, I wanted I it swear like to four God. months ago. Please. <laughs> JJ, I do I not want to open with a PG and have a PG in my hand all game. Give me another grade one. Please, for the love of God, Bushy. Please help me. JJ, we please. fight. JJ, we fight. We're throwing hands. Let's go. We fight. <laughs> <laughs> we fight. <laughs> boy, boy. Final destination, no items. Let's, let's go, go, dude. Let's, after this. It. After this panel, let's go. <laughs> we're throwing hands. That's I mean, it. <laughs> it's funny because, like, as much as I would love being able to open the game with a guaranteed balanced hand, there's a part of me that will miss just destroying someone with a bad hand. Mm. Yeah, when, when they don't get anything, and I'm just like, "Yep, die." But Astrid, yeah, shut and throw that at his work. <laughs> but 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 I find it funny is there's now decks that can now operate more effectively because now they can hit their perfect right moment. Now. Oh yeah, I think yeah. Ethics Blow is going to become considerably better after that. Like it's good now. It's going to get better when you can guarantee that grade two Blow. When you can guarantee that extra that extra one K on your Vanguard, that's actually going to be kind of huge. Like, if your opponent isn't cross-ridden, that makes the difference between hitting over a defensive and not hitting over a defensive. Like, because it puts you yep. from 10k to 11. It makes sure you, if you going forward, you know, you can still they hit over hit the triggers. two defensive triggers to stop you at that point, though. I mean, yes, but at the same time, you're Seven attacking multiple times. If you have point behind it at 27, hmm. that, that still doesn't stop Blau, um, Lug hmm. the Blau Luger Ethic Buster turn. Hmm. You need no, it. no, I mean, but it, it's more or less for your own defensive turns, though. It helps yeah. better like, mm. with your own defensive turns. And it's kind of like some people tech in, like, one of the Blau Grade 2 sometimes, sometimes mm. two copies of it, just to have it. Mm. So yeah. it's it helps super, super helpful. Because, like, my, my concern with that entire mechanic, is that, as I've been saying on JJ stream a lot, is that, like, it, it, it you know, I still think I have a valid point on it. <laughs> no, like... you do. That's the point. Is, is, like, you do. But I... Mold. They say thing. This is a difference between I find with a lot of different players. Hmm. Uh, I realize that I'm the kind of player that I get mad at myself hmm. more than I would get mad at my opponent sacking hmm. me, because I would like to put up a better challenge. But if my deck does not want to cooperate, hmm. I'm tossing it. Because hmm. <laughs> I'm yeah. tossing it, or I'm not hey, playing that deck for a while. Yeah, because I. I Sorry, I was because yeah. like my my concern with the mechanic. It's it's like my one big thing on it is that I'm worried about what happens because uh, the, the example I always give is the the exchange that or right the trade off card games have is you trade power. It, everything is a sliding scale of power and consistency. So the more consistent mm -hmm. something is, the less powerful it is. The more powerful it is, the less consistent it should be. So for example, ride chains or things that fix your rides. You know, for example, if you ride the wrong um, Genesis grade, if you ride if you don't have the grade two to ride on Genesis on grade one. If you have the Artemis grade one, if you miss grade two, it still searches top seven for the grade two and rewrites it anyway. So it's less. So for example, Artemis isn't as powerful without the break ride, but you trade it off by more or less guaranteeing you always end up on it, more or less. Like here and there, like you, you sort of end up on grade three Artemis most of the time. Like sometimes you don't, sometimes you do, but you, most of the time you, you don't do. want to be on grade three Artemis until the very yeah. But you need on grade four. But the idea is like you sort of you sort of end up hitting these right chains, especially like you know like even with like Galahad or Tsukuyomi, you, you sort of most of the time you end up on grade three Tsukuyomi when you need it. Like so, that's because so the idea is you have a less powerful like vanguard, but the trade-off is you can almost always hit it. Whereas something like MLB is uh, the example I give is MLB because it's something we all had. I'm not saying it's powerful now. I'm saying when it came out. I'm saying if we assume this mechanic has always been around, when it's mm. it's if it all hits, it's incredibly powerful. Or actually, even Ethics Buster. If if you get all the pieces, it's incredibly powerful. If you don't get the pieces, it breaks, right? But by having this consistency buff, it means that the strongest deck always have their pieces. So if you don't play a deck of equal power, if you want to play a rogue deck, like I I love playing Set Two Pale Moon, playing Go Beast Tamer Pale Moon, I love that shit. I love it. But like. My, I, I know full well I'm going to lose most of my games because I'm not the better deck. I can make, I can put up a fight. Sometimes I'll win a game, but if we're both going off, I'm probably going to lose that game. Like if if we're both going off, even if I'm making all the correct plays, I feel like I'll still lose that game most of the time. Like I'm still going to try to win, but it, it is what it is. But in a game where everyone is consistent, the consistent decks don't have that as a strength. Now they're just the weaker deck, and if you're coming up against a deck that's just strictly better, if neither of you bricks, I feel like the better deck is just almost always going to win like you don't even have the fighting chance of maybe they bricked a little maybe they bricked a little and i'm popping off like i have that catch-up mechanic whereas now it's like well okay both of us have our pieces because my example was but it's 
just guaranteeing the grade one, grade two, and grade three. It does not guarantee you no, don't just always the get a grade two in your hand. It is just guaranteeing you don't have to lose your ride. No, but my example is like, so the example like the reason I gave my example is as MLB for example is because so say it's, this is set full, okay, it just came out. MLB is guaranteed to have its starting hand to ba- you, no okay I'm saying guaranteed. You're gar- thir- twelve out of thirteen times your starting hand has one of the two blasters or trumpeter. So it means guaranteed, most of the time, you have, th- sorry, 12 out of 13 times, your starting hand has a way of getting a blaster out. Guaranteed. Actually guaranteed. Between the other but, three cards, you can get more. Grade ones can draw extra cards. Your grade one, zero at the time searched out blasters. Like, what deck in set four beats an MLB that never fails without you also playing MLB? Because Dote could, but Dote relies on grade threes. Grade threes aren't guaranteed. You're guaranteed grade ones and twos. You're not guaranteed a grade three, so you could just ne- never see your overlord. Whereas in a deck that's focused on early game cards, you're basically handing them their combo pieces, if that makes sense. So the game just hands them to you on a silver platter. But but the thing is about the guarantee grade one, two, and three. You still have the thirteen grade threes in your deck, and you know statistically speaking, say for example, you're filtering, you know, hand of. You know, two heal triggers back into your deck. You're keeping the grade ones and twos. You probably have in your hand, so that's three out. That's three out of the five. Hmm. So you filtered out your deck out to the the thirteen of each copy. You're going. You have a chance hmm. of out of the forty cards or thirty five or thirty four, for example, from hmm. the starter exactly, that you still draw into a grade three. So hmm. the possibility of you getting grade stuck in the game is mitigated hmm. by a whole lot now. Yeah. You get an exact brick rights you need is of course is you know up for the bit but it's just statistically better how they've if they've hmm. done it now hmm. just like i have the case for it using also og mlb which was consistent giant dot deck hmm. n- you're n- like even with that now hmm. MLB it's not is a strong it's not a strong deck at best and it is no, not no, my, my, the reason is, is the example is because it was a deck that relied on early game pieces that was dominant when it came out and would very much so benefit if this mechanic was around when it came out. Is the reason I use the example. I'm just saying as the, as the deck we've all played against. So it's now most decks are kind of on an equal footing. They're not falling behind as much as you would against a race against MLB. And now with Limit Break, you now have all these PGs that are basically your choice of will I let you bring me to five? Sure, I'll let you bring me to five, and then I'll just card out the rest of it and not have to worry it's hmm. still peace reliant because again the only reason why mlb did so well wasn't because you can get to majesty lord it was you had a three ways to sunday to grab yourself a blaster blade that could hmm. literally guarantee two hits hmm. again and the other fact was that a lot of limb brick decks needed to be at four damage yeah. to function and because of the old guarding system there was no way for you to stop them from just damaging nine you so it was very oppressive at the time because of it hmm. yeah if they just got you on three they just smack you until you took the hit and then they're just going for the last hit exactly hmm. i know like it, it's a mechanic i'm, I'm hopefully i'm like i was saying in, in jj stream like i hope it goes well i really hope it makes the game better but like I'm, my concern is that i'm not saying it's like it's going to be garbage no matter what like i'm hoping it goes well i like i want the game to do well hmm. Oh, right. Sorry. I mean, I'm... I've been testing on JP, so... I mean, it's... What have you thought about it, Kyle? I actually find it more beneficial than it's been negative. It's ways out. I mean, of course you... Again, but now I've had more in JP, fair games, that felt equally footed no matter what position I was. I <laughs> wasn't losing because I had a bad hand. I w- and that I had to wait for possibly a better rye target hmm. but at least i had the guarantee grade one and i had a pg in hand sometimes that was just a, just enough hmm. where i didn't have to give up my one pg that i was going to see that whole game hmm. now at least i had one way of keeping a guard up that i physically need in this game because there's no way of else protecting myself hmm. so I- it just helped so much because now i can combo out and just be able to do what I need to, and it makes the game feel like I'm equal footed. Like mm-hmm. there's no way of my hand being terrible enough where I can't play it now. Hmm. That's fair. So how do you, how do you feel, Asterisk? How do you feel about that? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I see it as I see it as beneficial on the whole, really, because I do agree that like decks with a powerful and a lack of consistency will definitely benefit from it, but I don't necessarily think right now in this current meta hmm. that's as much of a problem as it would have been if it was implemented earlier. Hmm. I think that for the most part, it's going to make it like because I mean the thing is like if you. Like you're gonna lose, you know, you're gonna lose games anyway. And yeah. I feel like with this implementation, at least when you lose, you're more inclined to think, "All right, I did something wrong. Let's go back and check my deck," rather than just blaming it on bad draws. So I think overall, just in terms of like a mindset thing, I think it's a better, I think it's a good idea to implement it because it it kind of it gets rid of this sort of like rage quit mm. like mentality of like, I didn't get the right chain," you know. So I, I think on the whole, I think it's a I think it's a good addition. Hmm. Like I'm hoping to see it thrive. If I'm honest, like I I, I like to be fair. Now I'm now I'm hearing like more opinions besides like it's it's good lol. You never break. Like I I kind of like I, I'm hoping it works well. Like I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the game do better because if the game does better, like that's better for all of us. It means we keep I getting mean, to play the game we like and everything. JP hasn't removed it yet. True. It means it's people aren't complaining about it. So you got to they've had hmm. it for three sets now Hmm. and they're not up in arms going like remove this system remove this system you know like Hmm. that's like the big thing if Hmm. jp was seeing an issue on it Hmm. we would see more of a prevalence of maybe they would have removed it by now if it was a major issue it's a lot of positive Hmm. reinforcement on it Hmm. no i'm I'm hoping i'm hoping to be like pleasantly surprised like when it comes around because i'm more than open to if it if i play and i'm like oh this feels awesome like I'm more than happy to be wrong. It's like, it was my con- oh, that was like one of my concerns that like, even if it's not a problem now, like what if it ever became a problem? But actually, the more I think You're about it now- your scars define you. <laughs> no, the more I think about it, the, the more I realize that later, the later the game goes on, the more it starts getting focused on grade threes, which aren't guaranteed anyway. So it just seems frightening now, but like as the game will go on, it'll become just like, hey, uh, you have more time to get to your grade three. So like, don't worry about it. Like, like just try to, which I think will be, yep. will be a better- I think I think it'll be better for the long run now that I think about it. I, I think I, I'm optimistic for it. I hope it goes well. Yep. <clears throat> but what do you, um, it comes out next set, right? Yeah, it comes out like on think, the yeah. first, so in two and a half weeks. God. <laughs> <laughs> with Jewel Mike says the upper center front runner of the set. JJ I'm shakes. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I like having a good fight against good decks, so mm. I'm fine with it. And I'm not complaining. All the sets are... Hmm. Since this set released, all the decks so far as continuization, we do have our strong decks, but hmm. isn't, like, undeniably hmm. oppressive that you can't beat them. S- strong just... decks are fun. It's just, as long as they don't, like, force you force you out of the game. Like, even if I get, like, Narukami, I still feel like I have, a, like, a fight. I have a way to fight it. I don't have to just roll over and be like, okay, take me. Like... Narukami is, like god tier it's gonna it stay is. for a while it is but it's gonna i feel like it gets overshadowed by like by the time reverse comes out i feel like and is it sort of still just as powerful as before yeah because <laughs> i feel like with Nar- cards with cards like with like bermuda that bounce their hands or like i, I would like against cards like um like pale moon that like bounce things in and out of soul like the the removal of cards on the field removes like things like Gauntlet Buster's power because Gauntlet Buster gains power of destroying things. So if you just don't give them shit to destroy, yeah, they don't... doesn't suck everything back into soul, though, at the end of the turn, though. It it, it tries to sometimes. You don't it have enough valid target mm. for Gauntlet Buster. There mm. isn't ways for decks to go like, well, I don't have a board at the moment. Mm. Bermuda leaves cards on the board still, too, mm. and that's why you have Descendant, too, is, mm. oh, I can't go gauntlet buster Urga Burga. well <laughs> let me do this. send it which will just guarantee the miss let me restand here's a crit stop mm. this mm. stop this get some help like <laughs> it's yeah. just trying to survive turns that's again two guarantee attacks mm. like four attacks in a turn that you narkami is still a breath will still dominate for a long period of time mm. so no, it's sure. a zero deck. It is mm. not a normal s- standard deck that you're facing. I mean, a normal TCG deck back in the day. This mm. is, it is a zero theme deck that is 
taking advantage of the benefit of it being a zero deck that mm. was originally standard um regular OG that mm. wasn't as powerful but now it is because it can just take care of the issue that zero has it plays around zero's um game mechanic so that's mm. why certain decks just obliterate because again they are a better zero form deck mm. paired their counterpart in the TCG. Hmm. But uh, I was going to say, I think does does anybody have anything else that potentially want to add to like this specific discussion? Because like I was gonna I was gonna ask if any of you guys wanted to like pass on to like you know, kind of sort of like final thoughts, like any sort of messages you'd like to uh, perhaps bestow on your viewer base, or, like the people watching the con, because uh, hopefully there's some new people watching it that have maybe never uh, maybe haven't heard of you guys before. How would you would you guys like to have any sort of closing thoughts or message towards those people or the people who know you and are, and are watching right now. Go ahead, JJ, or Asterisk. I'll let Asterisk do it. Uh, wreck a best go. <laughs> <laughs> mid, mid. The entire chat is having a fun field day with that one. Uh, no, um, yeah, uh, I, I guess uh, I guess to like kind of ramp all my thoughts up, um, yeah, Zero is a really fun game, and I feel like a lot of time, this is something I've noticed, is that when people talk about it and discuss it in depth the way we have, people kind of like to get very defensive about whether it be their play style or just the way the game works or just this kind of thing. But in all honesty, I would like to just say that, like, the best thing to come from this game, and I think I've said it from, like, day one, is just the effect it's had on the community and kind of bringing everyone together and just, like, I, I wouldn't know you guys if Zero mm. wasn't a thing. I can already say that right now. Um, and I think that's really cool. And I think mm. that something to kind of add is just that it's really, like, to me, one of the most fun things about any kind of card game is discussing, like, the ins and outs and stuff. And I feel like people kind of get defensive when it comes to uh, that and go, like, no, 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 I, my, my deck's cool. <laughs> but I feel like taking this kind of open just sort of like I want to say what I have to say about my deck or this or that mechanic and even having a bit of a disagreement I think that's a really cool thing to engage in mm. and not everything is your hill to die on mm. and that and having that kind of mindset makes things a lot more fun so I'm, I'm always interested to hear what people have to say even if it's something I completely disagree with so I guess that's just <laughs> maybe what I am with I, I know I should plug my content but I already did the beginning so mm. yeah no, plug it again. Plug it again. Wreckers, I, I don't know where to find you. I have no idea who you are. Who are you again? My, Sorry. My YouTube channel is Asterisk Official. Uh, if you just type in Kai Bang on Asterisk, it'll come up. Hmm. Uh, and then my Twitter is at Asterisk Off. Uh, and that's that, those are the two things I really uh, do kind of up, upload to. Hmm. So, yeah. Hmm. With so what me, about you, Kyle? I'm the type of person that. Again, I love card fight, Vanguard, everything like that, and I could shameless plug myself here, but I'm gonna tell everybody that is watching, if you see a new content creator or anything like that, suggest something to them. Give them a positive direction. Don't bash their video or anything like that, but give them a way to progress to make better content because again, they're starting from the ground where we all start. And again, we wanna thrive to be big, but sometimes we're just happy to be where we're at but and these people are trying to climb and climb and climb so give them some love and support and show them like that you might want to see something added to their content don't try to recreate it to be like different fight for them but give them a positive reinforcement go like i like this but maybe add this in because again like i have ran into many of the content creators in my time here with zero alone and i've gotten so much positive feedback and right directions where i was making missteps in and it we're a community as a whole and without each other you're not going to have a building block to stand on so mm. guys remember to support anybody that is just starting out just give them feedback don't give negative like don't bash them to the ground because that's not going to help them mm. at the end of the day mm. so guys this is ride my avatar and you know where to catch me on youtube twitch and all media formats. So, go ahead, JJ. <laughs> Aww. Wholesome so I'd like to thank you all for watching and stopping on by to this Vanguard tubing. No, 
Vanguard Zero tubing. Spoilers, spoilers, um, spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Panel, I guess. Uh, I guess, I don't know. GG Mr. Rogers, I mean, go watch my stuff whenever I post stuff, whenever I feel like posting stuff. <laughs> like, we just like to have a lot of fun. We meme a lot. We just like to have a good time. Talk about a whole lot of stuff. I like to count myself as a educational streamer that just happens to play Vanguard. That's basically what I've always said, and I'll, I'll stick to it. I was gonna say, um, obviously, you guys um, know me. I'm, I'm Echo. Uh, you can find me mostly on Twitch and Twitter uh, as twitch.tv underscore ekocbg. Uh, mostly, I just kind of like shit post online. Basically, and just visit other people's streams. Uh, but besides that, I wanted to say, uh, obviously, a massive, massive thank you uh, to our panelists, uh, to everybody involved in the background, so to the uh, everybody who's watching Cardfight, on to you guys, uh, the viewers at home, obviously Kyle, JJ, Asterisk, everybody, uh, for taking the time, because uh, this 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 has taken a lot. This will have taken a lot more time to record than you guys will see uh, in the final panel. Uh, so, a massive thanks for everybody for taking the time for showing their support. Uh, to the people watching the people supporting everybody along the way and kind of like everyone say just you know just be nice to each other be kind stay safe support each other and we'll see you guys in the next one bye guys peace